We've been talking about a lot of canon films recently, but now it's time for something different. How about a New World Pictures movie? Can't get too much different. It's very easy to go from canon films to a New World movie. But why on earth haven't I done Galaxy of Terror sooner? I don't know. I'm still confused as to why it took me till 2024 to spotlight Nightmare City. Like a lot of Roger Corman produced movies, this one has a collection of notable names in front of and behind the camera. The film was certainly made to capitalize on the success of Alien, but before the sequel Aliens came out, this one already had James Cameron as a production designer and second unit director, plus an uncredited set decorator was Bill Paxton, who got on so well with Cameron, he'd be a go-to presence in a number of Cameron movies, including Aliens. Hell, producers were so so impressed with Cameron's work here, they got him to direct his first feature, Piranha 2 The Spawning, in 1982. And where do we start with the people in it? We've got TV stars like Aaron Moran of Happy Days and Grace Zabriskie of Twin Peaks, horror icons like Robert England and Sid Haig, joining erotic film icons like Zalman King, and legends who are no strangers to snob episodes like the great Ray Walston from many classics and movies we've featured like Saturday the 14th Strikes Back, The Stand, The Jerk Two and paint your wagon. Future director David Dakota was a production assistant. Hellraiser 2 director Tony Randall did some effects work here. And star Edward Albert is in movies that I thought I featured but haven't, like House Where Evil Dwells and the Pia Zadora movie Butterfly. Everything connects here. The cinematographer is Jacques Haitken of the first two Elm Streets and The House Where Evil Dwells. Even the movie itself would help out later movies in more ways than one. It's a Corman flick, so the sets would also be used for 1982's Forbidden World. And with the plot being about people encountering an empty ship and their worst fears in space, its themes would also be seen in films like Event Horizon. But is the movie good? Good, though. Well, you're watching it in the middle of the night on premium cable television. Of course it's good! Whoa, I'm not as familiar with this New World logo. It's like Dr. Frankenstein created the CBS logo. I don't know what's going on here, but I know this distinct end of the world filter. Zapping over the title tells me it was electricity that caused the fall of society in 2019 after the fall of New York. That's right, I went for a 2019 reference over referencing the opening of The Terminator. My only regret regret is not referencing the opening of Bruno Mattei's Terminator 2. Directing and writing duties on this one went to director Bruce Clark under B.D. Clark and writer Mark Siegler. Both were behind 1969's Naked Angels. What they did to make Easy Rider sexy, they can do for making Alien sexy. The place may seem calm now, but it escalates very quickly in the next frame. <laughs> I haven't seen this much intensity in outer space since the crew summoned the Leprechaun. They're just testing the new Star Tours attraction at Disneyland. They decided to make the ride more safe when testers began turning into the moon. It's okay, someone will explain this to us. I am Mitri, the interpreter of the signs, the oracle of the game. Planet Master of Xerxes. <laughs> well, that isn't helping me out at all. I must apologize immediately to Virginia Madsen explaining Dune to me. At least I eventually understood what she was talking about after five or six watches. Let me see if I got this straight. This is the Planet Master of Xerxes, and they're sending up the Starship Quest to investigate strange drive-in monsters attacking their previous ship on the planet of Morganthus. I must say, the people of Xerxes made a bold choice in letting the man with the worst herpy I've ever seen control the planet. Planet. I don't know if I'm being reminded of Alien right now. More so Zardoz crossed with the lost Atari game of Zardoz. The new crew will hit it off fast. Who are you? Duh, you scared the shit out of me. What if I was holding boiling water? Don't startle me like that. 
Hurry, hurry! We need all the bodies we can for the slaughter! Get all the sex out of the way quick! Yes, Sid Haig, we know you need to apply the aloe for your horrible sunburn, but we have to blast off! It's interesting Sid went for the Gordon from Sesame Street look. They've all got moves on this ship. Whoop, I'm sorry. Did blasting off into space in five seconds cause me to fall directly onto your lap? <laughs> my bad. You know, my launch will last at least 15 seconds. Now we can get the much-needed character exposition out of the way. Yeah, but uh, you've been on the go now for, what, uh, nearly 25 years? Since the Hesperus, if I'm not mistaken. Hesperus. Everyone's forgotten now. Forgotten? I don't even know what that is! Now get your lap ready. I'm gonna fall on it again as soon as we go into hyperspace. Yes, we made it. I didn't think the gaming basement we're sitting in could handle that big of an LSD trip. It's still an impressive looking film. It does keep the budget low, and sure, some looks like a TV set, but a really good looking one. If it were a TV series, they've got a gigantic budget. So Captain Tranter was already the lone survivor of a previous mission, so she has experience. They'll all be fully protected on this mission. Just look at the walls. Sometimes on the ship, you can see McDonald's containers being used to line the walls. That's actually very important. It keeps the cool side of the engine cool and the hot side hot. I sense a crash landing. They're all preparing for Robert England to fall on their lap. While Ray Walston, on the other hand, he's seen this shit before. You don't get to be our favorite Martian without surviving a few crashes. Zalman King is ready. <laughs> I can produce at least five Skinamax movies up here. As for the captain... Well, Commander. I got you here. The rest is up to you. The hell kind of captain are you? We need to get out of here. Help us! Someone needs to tell them, hey, it might be kind of a gamble to just walk outside without a helmet. I mean, sure, we're all fine, but it's actually a miracle our heads didn't explode. What are we even doing out here? I don't know, mining for rocks? Isn't that what people usually do in these? Mine for rocks? I guess it's a way to kill time before the monster shows up. Or at least a jump scare. <laughs> He's already dead, sir. We don't need to desecrate the body. No, no, don't set him on fire. We may need that fire for later. He's already dead, Jim. Death trace. Maybe survivors. You hear that? There may be survivors. Don't throw sharp objects at them or set them on fire. They sent the best and bravest. <laughs> Settle down, Private Jack Blessing. Why did they send up the guy scared by everything? On second thought, maybe Alien would have been a little better if they brought along Corporal Shaggy. The other crew isn't helping either. <laughs> You know, there was probably a better way to see if the fire alarm still works. Remember, stay away from anything with stop motion. That will definitely signal immediate death. You know what else signals death? Being around the trigger-happy nervous guy, you're not making this mission safer? If the monster's gimmick is that it preys on fear, he's been waiting for a crewman like Kaz for centuries. The alien doesn't even need to do anything. Just shake the camera for a little bit. They have to lead him outside like he's a frightened dog. Come on, Kaz. Come on. Oh, it's not dark out there, is it? Yes, it is. How in the hell did you ever get your space license? I think I'll take a break. Even I want to give Kaz a little bit of a breather. Ruthless invaders, a defenseless planet, and a daring band of space adventurers fighting to save it. Battle Beyond the Stars, rated PG. Starts Friday. We're back, people. <laughs> It is for the best that Kaz leaves. They are much safer without his tomfoolery. 
when you're trapped in space, don't go with the nervous guy. Always fall in line with the one with the mustache. Really, you could pick anyone else. I love the intense ass stare of Zalman King. I actually do like him as an actor. He's kind of versatile with his intensity. Here he's more straightforward with his gaze, but then in Blue Sunshine, a great freaking film by the way, he gives one of my favorite anxiety-ridden, constantly rocking back and forth and sweat-pouring performances. They're sticking with their plan of walking towards anything that looks sinister. There! Dracula's Pyramid! That should work. Do we have any rock climbing gear? Of course we do! We've got 50 pound backpacks made of plastic that just have some lights on them. Flashlights are a poor man's tool. We gotta go bigger. Also, Bernard Behrens will be our I'm too old for this shit guy. I'm tired. I'm tired of giving orders and I must be for home. You're not old, Commander. No, when I'm looking at you, I'm not. I'm an old man. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna try to get laid. <laughs> We're almost there, guys. <laughs> On second thought, maybe we should have brought a rope. He doesn't let being in a B-movie stop his Shakespearean performance. The demon's tail dealt with us, those who dare not dare. It's a volcano anus. No need to get deep. Sure, sure, there may not be any survivors from the original ship, but the negative energy was coming from the pyramid. We'd be stupid not to just blanket go inside for the hell of it. See? We did bring a rope. <laughs> Oops, did I say rope? I meant he's swinging down on a long piece of licorice. They didn't even bring helmets, so I doubt they thought to bring proper spelunking material. As for the characters in Alien 2 on Earth, Turns out, guys, yes, there is an alien down here. I'm guessing maybe the one that killed Kaz. I'm glad I sacrificed myself for this information. The smartest ones are the captain and the cook. Why go in Space Pharaoh's tomb when there's plenty of unmarked beer we could be drinking? The others will be fine. They got Sid Hang to throw shit at the doors. Sid plays Q-Hod, who mostly doesn't have lines in it, mainly because he looked at the script and said, these lines feel weird for me to say. I'm just not gonna say anything. Which is perfect. The crew needed a Groot. He does have one line. I live and I die by the crystals. Right? That's I am Groot for I'm on meth. They're always thinking on their feet here. No matter what happens, just keep going. And if a gigantic door closes, you could try to stop it with your own body. What's the worst that could happen? If he's not crushed to death, tiny worms will crawl inside of him and finish the job. He got what's coming to him. You go around here and randomly throw spikes in the walls. We're going to do the same thing to you, buddy. Just know that the whole time, Robert England will be taking notes. What? We can kill people based on their fears? That settles it. I'm going to turn one into a cockroach. Hell, Taffy O'Connell here is afraid of worms. Just wait till you see what happens to her, or at least the very little I can show of it. I don't want to see Damia go. Of all the sentimental people in the movie, she's my earliest memory. She was the ring girl in Rocky II. So this is the most famous scene in it. She's a character who is afraid of worms and afraid of sex, so you know what that means. She's gonna bang the worm from Freaked, bro! Or <laughs> assaulted by giant worm. So the worm assault scene wasn't part of the original script, but was added due to Corman promising an explicit sex scene to the backers. The director and actress weren't keen on the scene, so Corman shot it himself with a body double for the nude shots. Even then, snippets had to be taken out to get it from an X to an R, but the director did later say, well, that scene did end up making it a pretty successful movie. This crazy ass scene looks like it should be in one of the porn parodies I've reviewed. I love what the other characters are doing. The hell is going on down there? The worm did what? No, 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 no. I, I can't do that as Freddy. I'll just pretend to be a hot nurse instead. 
Also, Ray is no longer my favorite Martian. Not only did he knock out Ranger, but he's interrupting the captain's video game time. It looks like she's playing one of those newbie games that you play in the theater before the movie starts. But after finally rage quitting, she's going to take on the feature presentation itself. We got movie sign! Ranger will figure out why folks are spontaneously combusting. You okay? Someone hit me outside of main control. I haven't seen anyone. Oh, guess that means it wasn't you. <laughs> I'll go look for the captain's burnt corpse. Anyway, the captain's dead, but someone's got to do the dishes. They're all clean. Who wants dinner? Maybe it is best that we leave. I won't go back into that thing. I don't run out on fights. There's a giant worm assaulting people. We need to leave. You're right. Let's leave and go back outside. No, no, that's not what I meant. We're at the part in the story where they don't trust each other. There's definitely a mole in the group. Is it the one acting like an android from the Alien movies? Of course it is. We'll be back. We're going to need a much bigger cork to plug up the evil in this space anus. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon who voted for this choice. With the new Alien film coming out, we had plenty of options to choose from, which is clearly why the classic Alien knockoff Square Dance came in second. I'd still like to congratulate Creature for spending a majority of the poll at zero, till one guy was like, hey, you know, I'm thinking Creature. Even the comments agree, I like where this one's head's at. You see a title like Square Dance, and you instantly want it to be about alien square dancing. I also like the simplicity of, yep. Like my grandpa seeing all the movies listed on the HBO lineup for the day and saying, hmm, yep. Think I'll watch Square Dance. So subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. Hope to see you there. We're back. Now about those space buttholes. I'm not going down in there, Cavern. It's too tight. Get to the kitchen, bring all remaining tubs of margarine. Or just shoot any random thing you see. Earlier, that would have been a silly move, but now I'm like, I think that's their best idea. Honestly, some of these cavities seem kind of fun to slide down. Looks like I'm watching the darker version of the climax from Joe Dante's Explorers. I do like all the exploring they do because shit, kudos to the set decoration. This looks more impressive than the things I see on a $200 million budget. It kind of looks like a cube movie at times. And most importantly, the more intense Zalman King gets, the better the movie. Even though you know for sure he's gonna die at some point. <laughs> If he landed on his giant backpack lights, he could be fine. England will pick up his intensity. What? I said quit playing the master with your friends, Cabron. Oh, buddy. I'm setting myself with my own bloody fingernails. Did you know that? Do you even care? Really, I think the acting is quite good in this. The characters aren't particularly deep. Just as long as we know what their fears are, <laughs> we're good. And even that still remains pretty surface level. But it's the casting that does elevate that. It's a movie where we see Robert Englund jumped by a much more evil Robert Englund. Three years before he'd play Freddy, they knew this guy could sell what's on the page. He does such a good job with his varying looks that it's never confusing which one's good and which one's the evil one. Erin Moran has a great look for this too. She sells it with her, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking twice about walking towards this immediate danger. I actually really like this movie. Like, yes, yeah, script-wise, it's got Corman-produced alien knockoff written all over it, but because it's Corman, there's so much talent behind the special effects, the sets, and the actors all genuinely look scared. Especially Taffy O'Connell, who really was afraid that a thousand-pound fake worm was gonna crush her. 
And though it's your stock space monster plot, I also don't know what's gonna happen next. You may think that someone will be in the movie for a while, and then, oh, Sid Haig is impaled with his own arm. It keeps the action and suspense going, it's a tight 80 minutes, and very entertaining. But not everything about it is unpredictable. Of course, Kor the Cook is the traitor in the midst. You watch out for him! Yes, thanks. If you don't mind, I'm gonna try conquering the menacing steps first. He has to make it upstairs. They need to be in the exposition room for this. One of those space rooms designed to explain everything that's going on at the end of the movie. And in this case, my god, it was Kor who was patient zero for the Master's herpes. Er, sorry. I mean, he's been the Planet Master all along. <laughs> Eh, <laughs> worth a shot. Only about a 1% chance that would have worked. Even with that, explanations are still surprising. A children's game, Kevin. This pyramid is an ancient toy. That's right. You know how there's a lot of sci-fi movies that have a toy line? I respect that in this case, the evil ancient pyramid is a children's toy in the movie. It came from an ancient civilization that was used to train their kids to control fear. Wasn't that an episode of Rubik the Amazing Cube that I watched? In this case, it's a giant game that he needs to win to perhaps become the new master. He's already got the mustache. I have no doubt he can be a perfect master. But first, you need to survive the ghostly versions of the dead crew members. Why? Because it looks really cool. Perhaps the financial backers also wanted hand-to-hand -hand combat. Still makes more sense than the Cloverfield paradox. Didn't I tell you? Always fall in line behind the guy with the mustache. The lighting here is really good, too. After this, I'm like, damn, I wish Aaron Moran had done more horror films. This is how Joni Loves Chachi should have ended. I guess Cabrin won the game, though. His prize? He can now shoot Core and become the new lead singer of AHA. Also, he's the Planet Master now. What does that mean? He caught the herpes! He's gonna be a much better Planet Master. He's gonna turn the pyramid into the casino hotel that it was meant to be. So with it having that Corman touch, the budget was low enough that it did make a good profit in theaters, and naturally was watched by many people on cable too. It did well enough that we got the spiritual follow-up in 82 with Forbidden World, you know, that Corman-style follow-up where there's no returning characters, but they have similar themes. As for Galaxy of Terror, if you want to see the flick, there's plenty of platforms you can see it on, but we know you're gonna pick Tubi. Why would you want to watch it anywhere else? Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to subscribe today and click the notification bell to get alerts on new episodes, and we'll see you next week. Death will surround you. It is the only way. A terrible way.